Hello, fellow collectors. Uh, Rick Tomaska here uh, to talk to you about the uh, uh, announcement uh, from NGC earlier in May 2020 about the fact that they are attributing the top cameo dive varieties now there at, at NGC. This is something I've been working with NGC uh, uh, with uh, for about a year, getting, uh, getting examples of uh, early strikes off some of the top cameo dives in the Franklin series. And then it took NGC a while to um, perfect the photography to capture all the unique cameo die ca characteristics of, the, of these different cameo dies. Now, the significance of these die varieties. Um, first of all, the dies are numbered in their order of appearance in the book. So since the 1950 is the first year of the Franklin series in proof condition, the 1950 dies will have the lowest numbers. They appear first. Um, and you can see here on page 35, if you've got a copy of Cameo and Brilliant Proof Coinage, there's a picture of five different um, Cameo Franklin dies for 1950, which were, you know, again, top dies for the year 1950. And then you have uh, on that same page, dies, now, dies 6, 7, and 8 are 1951s. And in fact, the coin here uh, on the obverse, that piece right there is a 1951 off of die number 6. I often get asked, well, how can you tell the difference between this die and that die? Well, here's what's interesting about these early Cameo Franklins. And I'm mainly talking about the Franklins in Cameo from 1950 through 1961. And by 1962, the Mint really seemed to get the hang and perfect the art of creating Cameo dies using that old-fashioned technology. Uh, for, for you newer collectors, and nowadays, when you buy a proof set from the U.S. Mint, they're all going to be beautiful, deep cameo coins with exceptional cameo contrast. Uh, the Mint uses a lot of modern technology to really uh, create an intense frosted cameo effect on these dies. The dies are hardened. They're able to strike hundreds and hundreds of exceptional cameo coins before they begin to wear. And once, as soon as they begin to wear, then the Mint the, 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 uh, you know, the mint replaces that die with a brand new die, so you're guaranteed of getting a, a really exceptional Ultra Cameo coin with every strike, with very few exceptions. There are a few years that uh, there were where there are exceptions uh, in the Kennedy series, but by and large, most of them are really, really exceptional cameos universally. However, this was not the case when you get into the early 70s and earlier. In this earlier era, the Mint, and uh, this is, I learned all this in discussions with uh, a gentleman by the name of Don Weaver, who I, I give recognition to uh, in all of my books. Um, he was a very kind gentleman, and he had worked for many decades at the U.S. Mint. He started out as a general helper in, in the proof division back around, uh, around 1960. And he, um, by the end of his career, he was the, the chief of the coining division. And Don would explain to me, and th these were discussions I would have with him over the phone because he was lived on the East Coast, that um, back then, um, unlike what some people claim that these cameos were an accident, that uh, the Mint really didn't intend to create cameo coins, Don explained to me that, no, they, they intended to create cameo coins. What they would do is take the dyes and dip them in a bath of 5% nitric acid, 95% alcohol, and that acid would create a, this frosted effect over the entire dye face. Now, they would then take the dye and put it on a buffing wheel. Now, the recess portion, where that can had the portrait of Franklin on the obverse, the Liberty Bell on the reverse, that portion would be recessed and when it went on the buffing wheel, that recess portion wouldn't receive the buffing treatment. So only the fields, the exposed surface, the fields would be buffed to a mirror-like finish. 
the portrait would retain that acid etched cameo effect. And the earliest strikes off these dies would have that cameo effect transferred to the coin blank. Now, that acid etched cameo effect, number one, was very delicate. With each successive strike, some of that cameo effect would be worn slightly smoother, would be lessened with each additional coin struck. And on top of that, each proof coin was struck at least twice under higher pressure. A half dollars were struck with about 200 tons of pressure. So for some years, relatively few really high and exceptional cameos were struck that had really top of the line, high end cameo contrast that we would call ultra cameo. As I said at the beginning, 1950 to 51, this art of creating these cameo dies was really uh, a craft that had not been perfected. So you see a lot of variation in the frost characteristics depending on the die it was struck, uh, struck from. And I'll, I'll just show you as an example. One of the coins I have on display here, I have some 1956s, but I also have a 1955 here. And here's a 1955 with a very unique frost pattern on the obverse of the portrait. And later on, several pages later, I have that same 1955 that is an earlier strike and a 55 struck from that same die, which represents a slightly later strike off that die. Now, how do I know that it's that die? In this case, that 1955, I believe it's die number 26. Yes, die number 26. It's really the top, what I consider the top cameo die for 1955. Well, it, again, it's the frost pattern. The earliest strikes have a unique frost pattern on the obverse and you can and the frost pattern is is um, on the reverse is a little more even but the obverse has areas of real heavy frost and areas of lighter frost that are unique to that die now the coin to the left of it is struck from the same die but it's a later strike off the die, and you can still make out that same frost pattern, although the frost is much, much lighter given that the die had worn. And so it's really easy. Once you've seen enough of these, it's really easy to tell the difference. And in, in fact, you know, NGC, as I was working with them, we went, we went over the dies, and they, they got to see firsthand exactly the differences between these cameo dies. Um, and right next to it, I've got some unique 1956s. Um, uh, one, oh, there's a, there's a 56, uh, one of the top dies, die number 31. And right next to this, that coin, I have a 1952 Proof 67 Plus Star Cameo die 14. Now, this 1952, why it's considered one of the top dies, even though it's not graded ultra cameo is because the obverse of this die is the heaviest cameo obverse you'll ever see on a 1952 when you, when you find an early strike like you have here. The reverse is more of a moderate to heavy cameo. It's not ultra cameo. So it doesn't get an ultra cameo designation. It does get a star cameo. But the obverse is, and again, here's, here's a picture of that die here. And it's really easily distinguishable by the die polishing lines on the portrait of Franklin. You'll see the same die polishing lines, the same pattern, when you see die coin struck from die number 14. Now, I'm going to show you one final die. Number six, one of the most favorite, one of, one of the most famous. Here are two examples. This one here is actually the cover coin up from the book. Die number six, folks. Uh, uh, when I saw my first early strike, 1951, from that was struck from this die, it was it was in the early 1980s. I had been specializing in cameo proof Franklins for about a uh, for a couple of years, and I hand, had handled some nice cameo 1951s and 50s and 52s. 
but um, I had never seen anything like the coin I saw at this Long Beach show in the early 1980s. I went by the da uh, uh, this dealer's table and in this little capital holder, white capital holder, there was this 1951 with cameo contrast that I had never seen on early Franklin before, and I was just awestruck. I didn't know such a 51 cameo die existed. It was just breathtaking. And uh, at that time, uh, I would buy and sell 1951s in gem cameo condition for three to four hundred dollars. Um, the dealer wasn't at his table. I ho hovered around his table for, for, for the rest of the show, you know, try, trying to uh, find out more about this coin and get a close look at it. He finally sh showed up at the end of the day there when they were ready to pack up. And I asked if I could see the 1951, and he showed it to me, and I just couldn't believe it. I mean, it was, it was struck from a, a repolished die. You could see some light die polishing lines on the portrait, but the coin, the frost was so snow white, obverse and reverse, had a few little hairlines in the field, but, uh, you know, it was a gem. And so I asked him the price, and he told me $1,000. And, he, you know, it was not negotiable. And uh, it was the end of the evening, and uh, I, you know, that was, that was like three times what I, what, a, what I was used to paying for a, a 1951 in Cameo at that time. So I uh, had him put it away, and uh, I thought about it all evening long that night in, in my hotel room. And I said to myself, you know, Rick, uh, you know it's a rare coin, and you know it's an exceptional 51. Uh, I, think, I think the best thing to do would be to buy the coin and to just own it. And if another collector doesn't buy it in the near future, then you can just own it and be happy about owning it because you're not going to see too many 1951s like that. So when the show opened the next morning, I made sure I got there bright and early as he was unpacking, and I told him I'd take the coin. I bought it for $1,000. And uh, as that, uh, that die, we, uh, it's now referred to as die number six because in the book it, it appears as it's the sixth Franklin die to appear in the book. And this one is really the earliest strike I have seen off that die. I mean, is, the mirrors are so deep and black on it. The coin next to it is also die number six. Um, slightly later strike when you compare the two. It's not as deeply mirrored, not quite as heavily frosted. It is still ultra cameo, but it's on the lower end of the ultra cameo standard as it's a slightly later strike. But then if you would get a 1951 that was maybe another 10 or 20 strikes later than this piece, you'd then have a 1951 that, even though it's struck from die number six, would be then fall into the cameo category. Because again, as that die wears, the frost lessens, you get less and less cameo contrast, the mirrors lose their depth, and so the contrast diminishes with each successive coin struck. So it's only these earliest strikes off these dies that have these ultra cameo characteristics. And not all these top, again, when you get to in, into the early, especially the early 1950s, uh, not all the top cameo dies grade ultra cameo. For example, I have several 1952 dies listed, featured in the book as top cameo dies for 1952. But there's really only one die that has any number of ultra cameos attributed to it. And that die is pictured at the top of the next page. I believe it's die called die, uh, die referred to as die number 11 in the book. And excuse me, die number nine. It's die number nine in, in the book here, right in the top left hand corner. And most of the ultra cameo Franklin's for 1952 that you see will be early strikes off this die number nine. These other dies are very, very nice, but they just, with rare exception, they just did not strike any coins with true ultra cameo contrast on obverse and reverse. And that's what makes the 1952 so rare. Also the 1950 is extremely rare. The, there were just very, very few dies created that had really exceptional cameo contrast, obverse and reverse. And, and there, may, there are many other uh, very, very tough dates besides the 1952. The 1953 is a really tough date. The 54, 55, 56 type 1 
extremely difficult to find an Ultra Cameo, uh, or Cameo for that matter. The 57 is rare, but the 58 is even rarer than the 57, and the 59 is even rarer than the 58. And why that is? Well, that's explained in all my books. Uh, that's for another presentation. But hopefully this little primer here on the, the Cameo dye varieties will have been helpful. We'll have more information on these Cameo dye varieties in my upcoming encyclopedia on Franklin and Kennedy Half Dollars that myself, Caitlin Tamaska, and Mike Canavino are working on. Uh, and we hope to have that book done in about, you know, about 12 months. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.